Hey guys, this is Dan Sullivan, and uh, this is the classroom demo lecture and hands-on for the new uh, ESI-165 Starter Buddy. And this tool is designed to simplify the uh, test that you should be doing if you have a slow crank. All right. Um, now, a couple of quick things here. First of all. Um, Everybody knows that most operators and drivers don't know the difference between no crank, okay, um, crank, no start, and they're different. We know this. We know this. Or there's a start, no run, okay? And these are all three different um, faults, okay? They're all three different situations. Um, this one and this one don't count here. We don't really care about those. Um, the one that I care about here is the no crank, and that's what this tool is for. This tool is for a no crank situation. All right, is it a slow crank or no crank? All right, what what do we got going on here? All right, so the the reason you'd use this tool is if you have a no crank. If it's cranking, then it's obviously an engine problem. Okay, and what we're concerned about in this particular um, test is whether or not the the starting cranking circuit is actually working. Is the cranking motor circuit functioning properly? Okay, so um, there are only four things really in the circuit that we care about and this tool actually can tell you which, if any of them, have failed. Okay, So first thing is you've got the battery. Okay, So that's obviously something that can fail, right? And we need to test it under load. If it's not under load, we're not really doing ourselves any favors. Okay, Static voltage doesn't matter. We've got the starter which um, in my particular situation includes the solenoid because I, I want to reduce the number of tests I have to do. Okay, Then you've got the positive cable, and then you've got the negative cable. Okay, And these are the only things that can fail in this particular circuit. And it's if it's failed, it's going to be one of these. All right. Well, the cool thing is is that the starter buddy actually will tell you whether it's the batteries or whether it's the starter, or it will actually tell you whether it's the positive or the negative cable. All right. And again, it only takes about three seconds for the test to run. So it's a very, very, very fast test, and it's also a very, very accurate test. So we'll go through that. Now the other thing is, and this is important, uh, a lot of people think they're doing the right thing when they do the starter amp draw test. Okay, well the amp draw test is not a diagnostic test, okay? Um, this test is not to diagnose a no crank. That's, that's not what this is for. Okay, what this is for specifically is um, we need to know whether or not um, the starter is actually producing adequate horsepower, right? Okay, because the starter's got to, it's got to produce horsepower. If it doesn't produce horsepower, it's not going to be able to turn the engine, all right? So you've got the starter, and then, of course, um, as I said, you've got the batteries, or battery, depends on what you're working on, and you've got the cables, okay? And the cables are the last thing people want to work on, but it's probably the first thing that's going to fail. But here's the problem. To do the amp draw test correctly, okay, the cables must be perfect before you start, and the batteries battery must be perfect before you start. Well, here's the problem. The amp draw test requires these two to be perfect to test this, but if it's a no crank, then it's one of these three, and we don't know which one it is. Okay, so fixing the cables and 
charging the batteries to do this test means that you're probably going to fix whatever is wrong up here by just getting ready to do this test correctly. So if you're doing the amp draw test now, it's not a valid test unless you've confirmed that the cables are perfect and the battery is perfect. Okay, so that's the first thing before we get started because a lot of people don't know the difference between these three, but we're doing a no crank and a lot of people think that the amp draw test is a valid diagnostic test, which it is is not, okay? So this test does not work unless you check and confirm that both the cables and the batteries are perfect, and if you do that, then you've probably fixed this problem, okay? Because the starter is not the problem as many times uh, as people want it to be, okay? Now I'm going to say one other thing here that um, I say a lot, and I want to make sure you understand where I'm coming from, okay? And I'm a mechanic, I don't use the word technician. Mechanics go to the part, okay? And that's not a bad thing if you're working on a mechanical problem. Okay, if you're working on an electrical problem, we don't want to do that. Okay, if, if you're working on an electrical problem, uh, you, you don't want to go to the part. Quite frankly, you want to go to the cables. Because the cables fail 80% of the time. Okay, 8-0%. Good money's on cables. One last quick thing. See if I can do this right without screwing it up. I'm going to use a pencil because I'm probably going to get them to get it wrong. All right. First of all, Ohm's law, volts over ohms equals amps. Okay. Well, I can transpose this, and I can move this here and this here because that's because I can. So volts over amps equals ohms. All right. So let's say, for the sake of argument, that I've got a battery in a 12 volt system that's holding 10 volts and let's say that it's the starter is drawing 250 amps okay now this is kind of interesting because we're dealing with a very small number here um, so 10 volts divided by 250 amps equals point zero four all right now let me let me make something clear there's no way that I or anyone without a really fancy expensive tool that none of us are going to pay for none of us can measure that we cannot measure 0 0.04 ohms. Okay? Now I want to show you something. If I take this number and double it to 0 0.08, which is still a number you cannot measure on a meter. You can't even see it. That's the problem. You can't even see it. Well, if I go back to the original equation and I say 10 volts divided by 0 0.08 uh, ohms, then the question is, how many amps is that going to be? Okay, so I'm going to go 10 volts divided by 0 0.08 equals 125. Okay, well I knew that was coming because of the way this works. But I want you to see this. Okay, this is what we're dealing with. This is a number you can't see. This is a number you can't see. We, we can't see the mechanical failure here. It's impossible. But going from 0.04 to 0.08, from one number that we can't visualize to another number that we can't visualize, to a number that is so small it's practically immeasurable, we lose half of our amperage. And the corrosion is going to drop 5 volts here. I mean, we're going to lose 5 volts with an additional 0 0.04 ohms. Okay, now that's bad. And the problem is that this is what kicks your butt more than anything else.
But when this fails, people go here and people go here. Why? All right, because mechanics go to the part. I'm going to warn you. If you continue going to the part, meaning there, you're going to have fewer successes than if you go to the cables and simply clean them. Okay? And my running joke is there have been a lot of $600 cable cleanings with either free starters or three batteries, free batteries thrown in. All right? So that's the preliminary. And I'm going to show you uh, just in a second. Um, what's going to happen here, and then when I do, I think you'll have a much better understanding of it.